Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I have another little art haul for you that I wasn't necessarily aware I was going to get, but um, yeah, the other day I was in a shopping center because I had some time to kill and um, I found a few things that I don't necessarily need, but that would come in kind of useful and so I bought some things. They were all fairly cheap, so that's my excuse. Um, these were reduced to clear, so I paid two euro for three palettes and there are two plastic palette knives in there. And I think I will probably, I'm in the process of bundling of my um, acrylic paints and I will probably put the palette knives in there because I've got some metal palette knives if I want to use them. But, but why, why I bought this whole thing? is for these three palettes because yeah I find even the plastic ones you can I can find a useful for these and they're fairly sturdy plastic actually and to have paid two euros for these three alone would have been good and I see as I said the palette knives will probably go away those are going to come in useful and then in my recent Amazon haul I said I had ordered some cheap brushes for my water-soluble graphite and for the watercolor crayons and um, for gouache and stuff like that. And Amazon sent me the wrong thing. It sent me a cheap painting kit. So I found these brushes and I thought they look okay enough and I they weren't, weren't very expensive either. So I hope they will be decent enough, but they look like they might be and I guess I'll find out. So I bought those and I think I will use this number two flat in a second to swatch the watercolors just to find out how, how it is, how they are. Then in my, my quest for, 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 for good paper, I found this mixed media paper and because I'm trying to do some more ink and wash and stuff, I thought maybe a mixed media paper might be good. And I've tried the watercolor paper and it's actually decent. So I thought I'll give the mixed media paper a try because there's also it's a bigger pad, it's 30 sheets of 200 GSM wood pulp paper, so it's all cellulose, no no um, cotton obviously, but 30 sheets for I think it was like five or six euros, so you know, we can deal with that. Then, so I bought the, the palettes and this book I bought at The Works, which is a shop in the UK and Ireland, where you can find... Um, mostly i think they're mostly known for selling books that at a cheaper price and this is where i found this it's painting happiness by terry runyon and i've done a few classes with her she's on skillshare and i've, I've come across her with other in other classes as well and i do like her whimsical style of painting mainly her the way she paints cats she paints lots of cats and she paints lots of ladies with hats, with cat, cats as hair. Let me see if I can find some in here. And because it was cheap and because it's always fun to have something for inspiration when you don't know what to paint or if you want just something cheap and easy to paint. I'm pretty sure I've seen, you know, just female faces, but no ca uh, cats on their hats. I'm pretty sure there must be, there must be some in here somewhere. Anyway, this is just, oh, here's one. Yeah, that's also not what I mean, but like similar things like this. And there are plenty of fun things in here. Oh, look, here's, here's one with a cat hair, with literal cat hair, <laughs> which I find quite funny. And so I'll see if I can get any inspiration out of this book. And if not, it's still fun to look at, I guess. And then the big one, even though it's not very big actually, is this little Cotman watercolor palette. It's the landscape pocket set. And I mean, do I need more watercolors? No, absolutely I don't. Can I open them? Absolutely I can't, it seems. Hang on a second, let me open it. Here, I've opened it. It's this little plastic palette, which is really very, very tiny and cute. And I do want a palette to take out with me. Ooh, 
there's a little sticker in here. I guess you can stick that outside on your on your palette to know they have they have different sets of these, so I guess you can put this on there. So if you have the portrait set and I can't remember what the others are, but if you have the different sets, so you can tell them apart. I'm not gonna buy any of the of the different anymore any of the different sets I don't think but I thought this is a good a good palette because it's um, got spaces for 12 half pans or I guess you could squeeze the pans in directly it's got three little three mixing wells here there's space for this little for a little travel brush and there's a little travel travel brush in there even so it's gonna be interesting to see what kind of brush this is it's a really tiny one so i don't think mm, i'm not going to taste and test out this brush today i don't think i really want to play with these ones and i'm not even sure well i will test it at some uh, some point but what i really want to do is unwrap these so i can swatch them in a second and i think they are basically going to be duplicates because i think these are the same paints as the ones that are in the um, Emma subscription boxes. And the paints in here are, hang on a second, let me read it out. Cadmium Yellow U, Alizarin Crimson U, Ultramarine, Sap Green, Yellow Ochre, Raw Umber, Burnt Sienna, and Paints Grey. And apart from the Paints Grey, I don't have the Paints Grey yet in my um, palette, but you know, I've got another set of paints coming, so. You never know there might be paints gray in there but i've got indigo in here and that's the same um it's the same pigments as the paints gray so the paints gray is a bit darker it probably has more it probably has some more black in it and the indigo has some more i would say probably has some more phthalo blue in it but it's the same pigments as both PB, pbk7 pb29 and pb15 and so while i don't need these I really want to see if the, these paints are the same as the, the ones in the, the Craft Ammo box and if they're really made by, by Phoenix. And so I've got these four, not four, eight, sorry. But they are colors that I use a lot. So apart from the sub green, but I can love with the sub green as well. But I mean, all the other ones. Well, the cadmium yellow you maybe isn't one of the ones I would have necessarily have gone for but you know it's a good enough yellow and we've got yellow ochre in there and a raw sienna no it's a raw a raw um raw amber not raw sienna but yeah yellow ochre raw amber and burnt sienna so I will use these and these two and the paint gray and these two I can also live with I mean it's a it is a landscape set so what I'll do is I'll unwrap these and probably swatch them on this paper so I can test the paper with one of these brushes. So won't be uh, taking long for you. I'll be back in a uh, be taking, taking a little bit longer for me and I'll be back in a second. So here we are back. You should really thank me for not doing that on camera because it took entirely lo much longer than it should have. It was terrible. So here is the cadmium lemon, cadmium yellow U. I'm doing the thing again but I can't remember. If it's lemon or yellow, it's cadmium yellow U. I think I'm pretty sure I wrote down lemon though, because I always do that. But yes, it's the cad lem yellow U. How difficult can it be? And I think if I had chosen a yellow from the range, hang on a second. This is a lizard and crimson and it's still the PR206, which I am not going to lie, is one of the things that in the end convinced me that I'm, I'm going to buy this little set. It wasn't very expensive. I paid 14 euro for this thing. The whole haul that you saw together, I spent less than 40 euro for all of that together. So you know what? It wasn't that, it's not that bad seeing how many things I bought, I think. And I bought them in actual brick and mortar shops, you know, with people serving me and all of that. So this is the ultramarine blue, which is PB29. And here 
here's the sap green, which is a mixture of PY139, PG36, and PR101. It's a bit of a monster, but it's actually quite a nice sap green. I'm not sure. I think that is that the same, the same mixture as the Windsor Newton Professional is. I don't know. I can't remember. And here's yellow ochre PY42. As I was saying, if I had chosen a yellow from the Cotman range, it would have been the Gamboge U, which is a mixture of PY150 and PR209, I think. Or is it also PR206? No, I think it's PR209. But I have that in a tube, so if I want to swatch that, or if I want to swap them out, or then I could do that, but I'm actually okay with that um, cadmium yellow U. It's not bad. And then I was wrong. I don't have the raw, C uh, raw umber. Sorry, I have the raw sienna in my Crafter More palette. I don't have the raw umber. And I'm not sure if I'm going to get that in the last box. Would I would rather hope not. And it's a mixture of PBR7 and PY42, but... I guess I can and can see why they included that in the landscape set. And the yellow ochre and the raw sienna are not that far different from each other anyway. I do quite like the raw sienna though. Then here's burnt sienna, it's PR101. And then paints gray, which is a mixture of PBK7, PB29, and PB15. And I'm sure I've said this before because I've got the paints gray in it, and their paints gray in a tube as well. It is one of my fa more favorite paints grays actually because of the granulation you get from the ultramarine blue that's in there. And I'm always disappointed that the professional version doesn't have PB29 in it. That is a mixture of PBK6, PB15, and PV19, I think. I'm not sure if it's PBK6. It might be PBK9 or PBK7. I can never remember that. So I'm actually fairly happy with the brush so far. Not that I've done much with it, but from just like filling up my little swatch card, and I will cut this bit out and put it in here later on. But let's test the brush a little bit, I guess, while I'm here. But yeah, I mean, I am, um, I, I bought this because I thought the palette might be useful. And like the palette itself for a little on the go palette that I can take with me and I'm not sure yet if I keep the paints in there or if I'm going to replace them with some of my other paints but you know what for starters is actually it's not a bad selection of paints you can certainly do quite a few things with it and the color choices are not terrible. So I do something that I'm really not very good at. I paint a flower because, yeah, I'm terrible at painting flowers. It has to be said. I guess painting flowers is fairly easy. But I do like this brush, I think. I, I think I might keep this, certainly this little flat brush because I, I don't think I've got a number two flat in anything, not one like this, and sometimes I think that might come in useful. And I guess nobody says just because I use these brushes for other media that I can't also use them for watercolors. But um, one of the reasons why I want separate brushes for all the water-soluble graphite and crayons and stuff 
is because I don't know what these will do to the brushes and I don't want to ruin my good watercolor brushes or the brushes that I used to paint with all the time. So that's why I wanted some affordable brushes I can use for those things and if I then also want to use them for watercolor I guess I can do that but I might keep this one as a watercolor brush exclusively and because there's also oh no it's a number four filbert but it's similar width and there's the six flat and there's the big flat and there's those round brushes so I'm not sure if I'm gonna reserve any of the others as watercolor brushes or if I'm just using them for all the other stuff but yeah this one I might just keep as a watercolor brush and no complaints with the paper it took all these watercolors fairly well and you can see it there's a little bit of buckling going on because it's what did I say is it 250 GSM that's what I said I think so it's a little bit lighter than 300 GSM, obviously. But yes, it works well with my the ink pen that's currently on my desk so that's the one that I'm using mostly at the moment but I've got lots of other ink pens as well so but that seems to work well for some terrible little leaves then just let's paint them in very quickly Yeah, I actually don't think that's up. This upgrade is all that terrible. And it's certainly one that you can adjust with the other colors that you have. And maybe I'll finally go out, do some plein air painting. Because that's what I want to do, so I guess. I haven't got an excuse anymore not to do it because I've got a little palette now and even those four, no, eight, it's eight colors, I can't even count. Even those eight colors are probably going to be a good selection to just go out and paint something and see what you can do with them. And then I will wait for my December box to arrive, but then I will definitely also do a comparison of these colors or the six colors that are that I have duplicates of, or what I think are duplicates in the in the craft demo palette, but I have the sap green and I have the cat lemon, no cadmium yellow, and it is always kind of striking when convenience mixes are exactly the same, and their cadmium yellow is a mixture of PY97 and PY65 and the sap green is the same mixture of these pigments there. And then the single pigment ones, I guess the one remarkable one is probably the alizarin crimson because the alizarin crimson in my craft demo palette is also a PR206 and I think PR206 is not really available anymore from the pigment manufacturers so all the paint manufacturers are phasing it out and if you buy if you buy tubes of Cartman alizarin crimson it's mostly PR 179 now is it 179 yes it is it's perline red perline maroon and both the craft demo and the, the uh, alizarin crimson and this one are still pr206 so that's kind of 
remarkable as well, I guess. And then I don't know about the paint gray and the raw sienna if they would be the same because I don't have a paint gray and raw sienna in my craft armor palette, but I guess there are too many too many similarities. So I definitely once I have my December paints and then can say with certainty how many colors I have two off. I will swatch these next to each other and see if they look the same or not. I mean from 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 the pal from from the paints and the pans the craft demo ones I extruded paints as well and some of them are like really bulgy ones like that sap green here or the alyssum crimson and some are much much smaller in the pans like the ultramarine and the burnt sienna. I guess my sap green that I just got very recently isn't overfilled as much as this is, but it looks very much the same, doesn't it? So I guess I can't draw any conclusions from that, but I guess that's also depends on each individual run. So, but yeah, I will play around with these. I will compare them with the craft demo paints eventually. I will use them to paint, I will use the br um, put the brushes to good use, and I will play around with the paper as well. So, I think all in all, a successful little art haul, and yeah, well, I didn't strictly, strictly speaking need any of this, but I'm still happy with my purchases. And I would like to thank you for joining me today for this little playing around and swatching session. And please give the video a like, consider subscribing to my channel, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye now. Bye.